There have been so many examples of the police treating Jewish people differently from others, especially from people who are abusing Jewish people on the streets. So what happened outside the JW3 Jewish Community Centre in Finchley Road in London is just the latest example. There was a conference going on, and yes, it was about Israel. In fact, it was run uh, in conjunction with Haaretz, the Israeli far-left newspaper, which is heavily critical of much of the Israeli state's actions, especially this government uh, being critical about parts of the war as well. So it's ironic that that mob decided to protest outside that particular event. And at the same time, of course, that's a very busy cultural centre. Many Jewish people go in there for all sorts of reasons. There's even a kindergarten there for Jewish and non-Jewish children. So it's definitely not appropriate for a mob to gather outside to yell and scream at the Jewish people going in or to indeed do that to anybody in the street. And the police, of course, as usual, as they have done for the last year, just stood by and watched it happening, kind of protecting the mob rather than protecting the Jewish people. And I think this is yet another example. But in this case, there were these two comparable moments, one where one of this mob were was giving the finger to Jewish people and another where a passerby gave the finger to him and of course you got to see the police uh, two-tier policing in action there when they responded completely differently yeah. they're there apparently to protect the mob yeah well, I, I've attended several of these marches just as an observer uh, you know I'm still vaguely a journalist so I take some interest in this sort of thing and uh, I've seen the way the police police those marches and uh, you know they allow the law to quite clearly be broken by the mind. You know, jihad from the river to the sea, uh, when will Palestine be free, all of this stuff. Uh, some of the posters, extremely extreme, if I can put it that way, and the police just let it carry on. Uh, so that happens on a regular basis. And uh, this happened only recently on the... By the way, I'm getting some footage together of uh, this incident on the Finchley Road. We will show that in just a second. Uh, but uh, this happened just a few days ago on the London Underground system uh, uh, on the tube. So uh, let's have a look at this. I'm tempted, uh, Jonathan, to ask those girls, what are you going to do when you grow up? Uh, but my point about this is, obviously that's reprehensible, really horrible for the other passengers on that train. Uh, but what are the police doing to find these girls? They're breaking the law there. I'll guarantee you, Jonathan, they're doing nothing. It's a very good question. You know, we've seen how quickly the police, uh, under government pressure, can act when they felt that there was what they called far-right protests going on. We've seen, of course, today with the news that, in fact, those protests having been triggered by a an attack on young girls, stabbing young girls by a guy who, it turns out, surprisingly, had al-Qaeda material in his possession of ricin. Uh, of course, when people reacted against that, albeit in reprehensible ways, the police were very quick to act. But, of course, when you see people, mobs on the tube, uh, on the district line, talking about occupiers, get out. Mm. Uh, how many occupiers are there on the district line? I'm not sure who these people were yelling at, who it is they're trying to intimidate. It's not just us Jews. This is what's important to realise. They're doing it there to intimidate everybody. Yeah, they're like the right. same That's yobs that point. do Just Stop Oil. They're the same yob yobs that like to throw soup at paintings. These are just people mm. with very low IQs, uh, low intelligence, low education. They don't know really what they're talking mm. about. And I think that, unfortunately, they funnel this uh, idiocy into attacking Jewish people all too often. The police really do need to stop it. And some of those people have been identified, but I'm not sure it's been by the police. I've seen people on X discussing exactly mm. who they are. One of them has actually made a video in the past where it certainly looks like the same person praising taxpayers because they fund her benefits so that she can do nothing, as she puts it. So it just gives you an idea who is carrying out this kind of vile anti-Semitism. But the police really ought to be doing the work of identifying them, arresting them, putting them through courts quickly, putting them in prison for supporting terrorism, for attacking Jews, uh, and perhaps putting them through some kind of education so that they're a bit less reliant on uh, that kind of uh, funding from the state and able to go and get an actual 
Absolutely. Uh, uh, we got that uh, footage of the Finchley Road incident. Uh, let's just recap. Uh, this is a, a Jewish, a perfectly legitimate meeting of Jews uh, being assailed, if you like, by a Muslim, Muslim mob. Uh, and uh, you see the police. Well, let, let's just play it. Let's have a look. <laughs> So they, they, there you have it. I mean, uh, they're watching uh, the this rather angry, threatening mob doing nothing. This guy comes past, obviously angry. Oh, we don't know whether he's Jewish or not. I suspect he's just a local resident. Apparently he was walking his dog. Uh, and he reacted and said, why don't you lot shut up? Why don't you F off? You know, you want to tell everyone else to. Please, you know, down on him like a ton of bricks. It, it's pretty blatant, isn't it? And you know what else? There have been protests like that one going on in Swiss Cottage in London as well, another area with quite a lot of Jewish people. Every Friday afternoon, just as Jews are getting ready for Shabbat, the Jewish Sabbath, uh, really just rowdy, horrible mobs trying to intimidate people in the street, Jewish or non-Jewish, but it's focused at Jews. The police have allowed it to go on for so long uh, that actually groups of Jews have got together to try to counter this, to try and stand up to it on the streets, and non-Jews who stand with them. Uh, it's really terrible that I think we've come to this. The police should be stopping this kind of intimidatory behaviour, whoever it's done by and whoever it's aimed at. But in this case, as all too often, it seems to be Jewish people who are considered fair game uh, for whatever reason. These people have apparently no actual knowledge of what's going on in Israel and the Middle East. Uh, they don't seem to have any knowledge of the fact that that large swathes of the Arab Middle East are actually four square behind Israel's actions in trying to get rid of Shia, uh, Iranian, uh, Islamist extremism. They mm. seem to have no idea what Hamas and Hezbollah actually stand for. There was even a gathering of them. There's a video that's been going around online in Trafalgar Square after Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, was taken out by Israel. And they were there for a vigil. When somebody went and asked and filmed the police as they asked what was going on, the police said it's a vigil for the leader of Lebanon, correct? Uh, when they then discussed that it was actually for the leader of Hezbollah, uh, the police said, oh, yeah, that's right. And he said, well, Hezbollah is actually a prescribed terrorist organisation, so that's illegal, showing support for them. And the police said, well, that's your opinion. That's right, the police that's right. Yeah. are badly educated. It's just got to the point where police, individual police are so badly educated, their instructions are clearly to let these anti-Semites and pro-terror thugs loose in our streets to do what they like. And then they arrest people who are trying to counter that, like the heroic protester, Niak Warbani, the Iranian dissident, the anti-Islamic Republic uh, regime protester, who simply holds a sign on the street so often that says, Hamas are terrorists. And yeah. he keeps getting arrested by the police <laughs> for this statement of British law. It's a statement of fact. So everything's upside down, but it's not funny when you're Jewish because you're at the really yeah. at the rough end of all this. And it's it's about time that the government and the police just actually did the right thing here. Yeah, the police uh, the police really uh, need to raise their game here. There's something going on and it's not right. And, uh, uh, you know, I only laugh, Jonathan, because if you didn't laugh, you'd cry. Uh, really? And uh, obviously we could go on with examples of this two-tier policing forever uh, but uh, lastly uh, for this little section uh, here's something for us to discuss uh, let's have a look at this guy this guy was marching down Oxford Street in May May uh, remember that that's what is that now five six months ago so this is in May let's have a look at these pictures uh, have we got them ready let's uh, put them up there there, there we are uh, oh Oh, OK, well, that's him in the newspaper. Uh, uh, yeah, so he, he was marching down uh, Oxford Street with Hamas 7 on the written... Yeah. Uh, we actually do... I've got some pictures of it more uh, obvious. Now, if you see the pictures... You of it, if you if you If you see the pictures... Uh, the full pictures, you know, you can almost identify him from the side of his face. This is in May. Uh, we can't actually establish whether or not the police have made any attempts to get this guy at all. Because that, as you just said, that's a clear celebration of uh, Hezbollah, of Hamas, 
uh, prescribed uh, a prescribed terrorist group uh, celebrating the Oxford uh, the uh, October the seventh atrocity. Uh, that's against the law. We can't even establish whether the police have done anything to try and find this guy. And actually, if you look at the pictures, it shouldn't be that difficult. Well, listen, London's a city full of CCTV. Oxford Street, probably not one of the black spots. And I'd also say uh, that aside from him, you know, there are so many other examples. Even yeah. before October the 7th, we have the example of those people who drove down from Bradford through London shouting out of megaphones with PLO flags on their cars, uh, F the Jews, rape their daughters, rape their mothers. That's exactly what happened on October the 7th. They did F the Jews and rape their daughters and rape yeah. their mothers and much worse. Yeah. Uh, and yet those people never got uh, tried in court. They got let off. The CPS didn't care. Uh, the police don't seem to care. The government doesn't seem to care. Nobody seems to care when it comes to attacking Jewish people. And, you know, there's only one way this goes. It gets worse and worse. And Jewish people feel less and less safe and able to live in the country. And that is not the end of it. Because once you've uh, got past the Jews, I'm afraid they're not going to leave the rest of the population alone. Uh, Jews come first, but they're out to get all sorts of people in our society. They don't like... Uh, plenty more other than Jewish people. And I think that it's about time that not just the police and not just the government stood up to this, but the, the large numbers of non-Jewish people who are standing up with Jews are, are such a comfort to us, yeah. and they should be a comfort to all right-thinking Brits. The more people who can join them uh, day after day on the streets, standing up against this kind of hatred, uh, all too often the so-called anti-racism protesters are actually uniquely racist about one group. Yeah. And I'll tell you what that one group is. Yeah. It's us lot, the Jews. So anti-racism needs to really come to mean something. And, and one of the worst racisms going on at the moment is against Jewish people. They wouldn't tolerate this sort of thing against any other group. If it wasn't Hamas on his shirt, but something else against a different ethnic group, you could be sure he'd have been arrested. But when it comes to Jews... They don't really care. And you know the worst thing about it, Jonathan, I, I live, uh, you know, uh, in a very Jewish area. I've got a lot of Jewish neighbours and uh, yeah, I don't like to hear, uh, you know, my 65-year-old neighbours who've lived in this country, they're British, you know, lots of them lived in this country, they're, they're British. Uh, they're thinking of leaving. They don't feel safe here anymore and that is not a nice thing to hear. And here's the worst aspect of this. Uh, extraordinarily and surprisingly uh, there are only something like 290,000 Jews uh, in all of Britain. It's a very small community and therein I suspect lies the problem. Uh, there's not that many votes in it for Labour uh, at the next election and yet the 4 million Muslims that live in this country may uh, be very uh, relevant to Labour come the next election. So in the end, it might just be a numbers game, but I wish this cynicism would end and the Jews who are British, the 300,000 or so Jews who are British, who live here, uh, should be allowed to live their lives like the rest of us, in safety, in peace and harmony. And it's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. Uh, but thank you for coming on and we'll talk again very soon. Uh, that is uh, That is uh, Jonathan Sassadoti, uh, Jewish journalist there. Uh, Two-tier policing. We just went through a few examples.